Okay, so what if I don't want to give up on her? You don't call. I mean, you said I don't call if I wanted to give up on her. Right. So I don't call either way. Right. <laughs> so what's the difference? There is no difference right now. See, Mike, the only difference between giving up and not giving up is if you take her back when she wants to come back. But you can't do anything to make her want to come back. In fact, you can only do stuff to make her not want to come back. We've all heard of interpretations of this specific dynamic. Some people call it no contact. Other people call it radio silence. But we all know the notion of it. The notion is if we want an ex back, we have to give them the time and space to miss us. And of course, in the movie Swingers, the scene that you just watched, they're talking about the dynamics and the importance of no contact. The choice of whether or not you want to take the person back when they come back or choose to come back. This is usually a Hollywood spin on the situation. The truth is, in most cases, when our exes do reach out to us, it isn't for a rekindle ship. It's usually based out of an emotional need of curiosity or some level of insecurity on their part. But this specific scene does bring up a very valid point. The point is, the purpose of no contact is to give them the choice to come back to us. And then in turn, we have a choice of whether or not we want this person back in our lives at a specific moment. This can be quite confusing to most people. After all, we go into the concept or into the practice of no contact initially to get someone back. This is what 90% of the coaches tell us on YouTube. But if we actually dive into the history of no contact and actually really understand the purpose behind it, the initial purpose behind no contact was originally intended to help divorcing couples separate, to feel liberated from one another, to gain emotional, financial, and personal independence from one another. But all of a sudden, over the years, this notion has taken an interesting twist. This twist of giving the person the liberty, the freedom to miss you to get them back. And in certain aspects, it's quite a brilliant dynamic. After all, what better way to help people heal than to tell them the very thing that they need in order to get the person back is also the same thing they need to personally get themselves back. After all, our main purpose in life is to connect with others. That's the reason that we're on this planet after all. But a lot of us seem to forget that when we're in no contact. And more often than not, we will lose ourselves in the moment, and we will lose ourselves in the initial purpose of no contact. Let's watch. So the only difference is if I uh, forget about her or just pretend to forget about her. Right. Well, that sucks. Yeah, it sucks. So it's just like a retroactive decision then? I mean, I could like forget about her, and then when she comes back, maybe I could just pretend to forget about her? This is often a mistake that I find a lot of my clients do. Usually they will come into a coaching session and say, I really want to make this person suffer. I really want them to really feel my absence in the situation in order to get them back. And usually they will put on a sort of mask, so to speak. This mask that if I just show that I am not missing them, that I'm moving on, they're going to realize their mistake. This is usually very transparent in the form of the way that we try to project these ideals usually through excessive posting on social media or telling mutual friends or the way that we carry ourselves in our day-to-day -day lives. The whole notion is that the projection of getting over someone isn't the same as getting over someone. And the number one mistake that a lot of you do is that you try to live a false reality. You try to show that you're happy rather than actually being happy. Remember, no contact is about getting you back. And the notion of no contact, although it does extend to the point where it does encourage those that have exited our lives to contact us again after a certain point, we have to really ask ourselves, do we want this person back? And then, of course, this all fits into the dynamics of social interaction. I'm assuming, of course, that you've spent this time working on yourself, going to the gym, becoming more social, and even started dating other people. And what is it if we start dating someone that we have a deeper connection with than we did with our ex? After all, this is what usually tends to happen. Usually, we will go out, we will meet someone, we will connect with them, and we will start realizing that this connection that we shared with this person that, quite frankly, chose to abandon us, wasn't that all unique. In fact, 
what it was was it was an experience a learning opportunity if you will to allow us to reflect to reflect on what we were and what we wish to be later on in the future remember just because a relationship quote failed doesn't mean that you failed the lesson of that relationship no other scene is truer than the scene in swingers because it takes the concept, the simplicity of no contact, and it really breaks it down. It breaks down, it breaks down the paradox of the whole dynamics of no contact, which is you're doing it to get this person back, but at the same time, you're also doing it for yourself. And most importantly, when you do it for yourself, more than likely, this is what will end up happening. Right, although probably more likely the opposite. What do you mean? I mean, at first you're going to pretend to forget about her, you'll not call her, I don't know, whatever, but then eventually you really will forget about her. Well, unless she comes back first. Mm, see, that's the thing, is somehow they know not to come back until you really forget. There's the rub. There's the rub. There indeed is the rub. The irony of this specific scene in particular is that it takes place at the very beginning of the film. It's to give context in the current situation. The main character has gone through a very nasty breakup, has relocated to LA to, quote, find themselves, and now they find themselves completely lost, completely unknown in the dynamics of what to do next. How is it that I can get this person back? And as the dynamics of the interaction go, they only tend to come back once they truly know you're over them. But how is it that they know? Craig Kenneth usually calls it the force. Rory from the left chat usually explains it as coincidental. What is it exactly? I have my personal opinions on this. My personal opinion is that the human brain is capable of levels of functionality that we have yet to discover. After all, it's a giant electric box. So the ability for the human brain to contact someone else in the free world isn't that far-fetched. In fact, it's more than likely going to contact someone that you had a very strong connection with. It's only after that that connection is severed do people start really thinking about us, really thinking about the things they've done with us, the things that they miss about us. In turn, when exes come back, it's usually after we've already done our own internal healing. This internal healing teaches us that we're better than this person that left us. It teaches us that we're going to be okay with or without them. The lesson of the rub is that life sometimes is just one giant paradox. Sometimes we can't control what happens to us. Sometimes we can't control how things end up in our lives. At the same time, the lessons that we learn and the dynamics that we get those lessons from, such as the people we date, help define us for the better. And it's in that irony, and in that oxymoron, if you will, of no contact, that we truly start realizing when this person truly does come back, whether or not we actually want them back. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, I would ask that you hit the thumbs up icon at the bottom of the page. In addition to that, if you're liking my channel, I would highly recommend you subscribe. I'm doing my best to put up at least two or three videos every week. And of course, I'm including a live stream every sa single Saturday moving forward to help start building that dynamic in that community. In addition, we also have the Discord, which is about to hit 100 members. I never would have imagined two years ago that we would reach those kind of levels. But every day, people are on there interacting, communicating. And I highly recommend those of you that want to talk about relationships, regardless of whether you're the dumper, the dumpy, you're more than welcome in that Discord to interact with us and help grow as a community. Lastly, I wanted to mention my coaching practices. If you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, you can find information regarding that on my website, included in the description below. With that being said, this is Clutch, signing off.